so we're picturing all of that. So that's what we're doing here. We're just proclaiming faith that has already been wrought in their mind. And so I've asked each one of them. Each one of them has filled out an application, and each one of them has gone through some extensive procedure, as we're known for in TCC, <laughs> for all of our membership and other things. They have uh, filled out an application. I've heard their testimonies, and so I've asked them to read a, a short testimony of just how they came to Saving Faith so that you know a little bit about their faith story. And so RJ is going to lead us <coughs> off, and so RJ, share how God, how you came to Saving Faith in Christ. Gladly. <coughs> That's all right. They're all friendly, and none of them bite. <laughs> That's for this group right in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they might nibble. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little nibble, right? All right. Um, growing up, my mom would take me and my siblings to church on Sundays whenever her work permitted. She also encouraged us to read the Bible and pray every day. But I didn't listen because, to me, they were simply chores that had to be done. And as I got a little older, I drifted further away from the faith and instead sought people's approval. I thought that being Christian was uncool and thus did things against the faith for the sake of popularity and belongingness. Being gifted in my studies, I used my book smarts as leverage for attention. <clears throat> I played baseball, which I also used to gain people's approval and impress them. I had more faith in these things than I did in God, yet I still called myself a Christian. While I did manage to fit in, my feelings of satisfaction and joy were short-lived. I graduated high school and would be going to UGA, and though I felt accomplished, I was living without purpose, without meaning. Enter fall, 2021. I met this guy in my English class who was Christian, and I could tell right away that he was pretty dead serious about his faith. Uh, so one September day, he invited me to church, so I agreed to go, not expecting much. I remember the pastor mentioning in his sermon that no one is good, and that we've all sinned before God, and we'd be judged for those sins. But God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, so that we may be saved from his wrath and judgment. And that by faith and faith alone, we would not have to go to hell, but have eternal life with him in heaven, not because we are good and do good works, but because God is good. All my life, I was con convinced that I was a good person, and so hearing this made me question my morality and my state with God. So not, not long after that sequence of events, there was no stunning revelation or experience, but the void in my life seemingly disappeared. I found myself praying and getting in the Word more often. I genuinely looked forward to church on Sundays. No longer was I concerned with being popular. All I wanted to do was serve God and others. This was the fulfillment I needed. Not popularity, not the approval of others. The only approval I needed was God's. The best of all of this is knowing that while I still carry baggage from my old life, I have eternal life through Christ Jesus because of God's extraordinary love. And my prayer today is that my testimony serves as encouragement for those who don't know God to want to get to know Him and no longer live a life of sin, but live a new life that loves God and desires to serve Him. Thank you. All right, RJ, thank you for sharing that. Jeremy Bell. In God's providence, he's blessed me with faithful, godly parents. I was brought up in the church and was enrolled at a private Christian school beginning in fifth grade. In elementary school, I began to understand sin and the reality of eternity. And I made a profession of faith, which was primarily influenced by fear of the unknown, having no genuine understanding of the gospel. I requested to and was baptized based on that profession of faith. I grew older and began to give into various sins. Over time, I became secretly entrenched in those sins while working hard to maintain an exterior that gave the appearance of one who was committed to Christ. In every sense, I was a whitewashed tomb, full of sin and death. 
I had convinced myself that I was a faithful Christian, despite the ongoing and unrepentant sin in my life. I achieved this by fashioning an idol of a God that did not exist. This God had no sense of justice in response to sin and could be placated by my good works that would merit salvation. I remained in this deception even after marrying my wife, Ashley. I continued to live in unrepentant sin several years into our marriage. I continued to hide those sins, but the consequences were evident in many areas of my life. Ashley and I suffered a miscarriage of our first child in 2017. It was in and around this season that God began to work in me. I came under severe conviction of the sin in my life as never before and soon felt that my beliefs were wrong. I began to search the scriptures that I had heard all my life and examine my life in light of 1 John. It became abundantly clear that the truth was not in me. What became more obvious day by day was that my sin, God's righteousness, and certain judgment, and that I justly deserved that judgment. In that season, God converted me. I understood the true gospel for the first time after years of hearing it and suppressing its truthfulness. I realized that I needed a righteousness that was not my own, but that of the perfect God man, Jesus Christ. I came to understand that his death on the cross paid the penalty for sinners by satisfying the wrath of God. Prior to surrendering to Christ, I was lost. I disregarded and disrespected God's word and lived a life that was a terrible lie and lived in unrepentant sin. Upon conversion, God granted me the gifts of faith and repentance. He replaced my heart of stone with a heart of flesh. And for the first time, I was at peace with God and began to love Him, His Word, and His people. Today, I want to be obedient to Christ's command to be baptized, as I have not yet been biblically baptized following His conversion. Tommy! So I grew up in the church, going to church every week with my parents or anything, but before Christ saved me, I was a very fake person. I followed the rules, so to speak, so that I could fit in with everything and everyone around me. I didn't want to disappoint anyone, and growing up in church, you know, I was always striving to behave and that sort of thing to make sure I measured up. Um, but in, in my heart, I was angry, I was spiteful, I was lustful, I felt depressed because I knew that everything I was doing was faking it just to get approval of everybody else. But I knew God was real, I just felt that he cared more about other people than he did about me. God drew me to himself when it felt like everything around me was unraveling. I had been furloughed from work and was home with this little guy for a while and had too much time to think, which ended up being the best thing that could have happened. God graciously allowed several uh, online ministries to show up on my YouTube feed and eventually ended up watching the movie American Gospel. I realized when I watched that, that the reason I felt distant from God and that He cared about other people more than me was because of my sin. My works couldn't save me, only Jesus did. Since that day, I feel free from my own sin. I no longer am trying to earn my way to heaven because I know that Jesus is the only way that I could have reached there. I couldn't earn it myself, it was only from Him. My wife and I have a stronger marriage and we're closer together than we were before. I'm a much more patient person, I'm a much better father for my children. I no longer feel depressed and feel like hiding in a shell. I have a new life in Christ. I'm being baptized today to take the step of obedience that thankfully I never took when I was younger because I wasn't wasn't safe. And Michaela. She's all the way to the back. <laughs> all right. Um before Christ, I was a whitewashed tomb. I was proud, too proud to admit that I sinned. I was striving to appear perfect on the outside, while inwardly I was falling apart. I refused to see how my sins were offensive to God. Eventually, the striving became tiring, and I stopped caring. I lived my life how I thought best. Though I was raised going to church my whole life, inwardly I was dead. Early pandemic, I came across sermons that convicted me. I understood I was a sinner, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. My sin is wretched and offensive to God, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. I deserve his wrath and justice. The wages of sin is death, and I deserve death. I cannot please God on my own. Romans 8, 8. 
Jesus is the only way to God. He tells us to repent and believe in him. Through his sacrifice, death, and resurrection, my sins are forgiven. I have finally repented. Jesus gave me a new heart and new desires. Before, my life was marked by pride, idolatry, and unrepented sinning. Now, he's been growing me in humility and repentance. Daily I see more and more how sinful I truly am and how much I do need Christ. I have peace and assurance I never had before. I want to be baptized, to follow him, and to obey him, and I want the world to know that I belong to Christ. Amen. Wonderful testimonies. Four times we've heard the gospel right there. Isn't that amazing? And now we're going to go watch the gospel as we picture it. So here's what we're going to do. All right, this is RJ. RJ, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I do. Do you believe that Jesus died for sins and rose from the grave? I do. Do you uh, trust in Christ alone for salvation? I do. And RJ, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Jeremy. Jeremy, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for sins, even yours, and rose from the grave? Yes, I do. Do you trust in Christ alone for your forgiveness of your sins? Yes, I do. And based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You probably weigh about the same. Though, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna matter. <laughs> this is Tommy. Tommy, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died for sins, even yours, and rose from the grave? Yes. Do you trust in Christ alone for your salvation? Yes. And based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is the Son of God. Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died for sins, even yours, and rose from the grave? Do you trust in Christ alone for salvation? And based on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's head up back to where we were, and then we're going to sing and pray.